Suriname represents one of the largest stretches of undeveloped, unspoiled rainforest in the world. It's South America's smallest country, and it's packed with cultural diversity. Once a Dutch colony. Its one and only big city is the capital, Paramaribo. Just got its first movie theater last year. Chinese, Javanese, Hindustani, and Africans live here. Some descendants of people pressed or enslaved to work on Dutch plantations. Modern city life is confined to a small footprint. The heart and soul of this country is its seemingly endless vast wilderness. I'm taking a journey up the Suriname River into the desolate interior to faraway villages like Malobi and Bodapazi. There, I will find the Maroons, proud descendants of Africans who rebelled against their enslavement, fought a jungle war against their would-be masters, and carved out a life that planted a piece of Africa here in the New World. For villages like this one, the Suriname River is their superhighway. It's also one of their main sources of food. Beneath the surface of the water are catfish, whitefish, and lots and lots of piranha. Three or four times a week, Laurent and his cousin Okuntu paddle their handmade boat about an hour upriver. I'm tagging along in one of the bigger boats, called a korjal, to learn how they fish this river and hopefully get a little taste of piranha. The boys don't use poles, they don't use lures, just lines, worms, and pieces of fish as bait. Laurent is 15 years old, Okuntu is 14. They're seasoned veterans at this kind of fishing. It's a skill that all Saramakan men have to learn to help keep their families fed. The boys kindly agree to come aboard our Korjal and do what they can to teach the American guy the ropes. Is this my line? I just have to watch and learn. Are you kidding me? This guy just threw a worm 40 feet. Well, that wasn't a very good cast. <laughs> So he's saying that you have to have your hand stay still and not move it around. The string, it mustn't touch the side of the boat. Hey, everyone. I'm Billy Bob Hula Bopper for the Fishing Channel. I think I caught the engine. Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, <laughs> I definitely caught the engine. Am I the worst fisherman they've ever met? <laughs> Whoa, did you see that cast? Oh, yeah. Abunu? He says that's good. Yeah, you're darn right that is. Okay. A little practice. There are big fish in this river, but we're not seeing them today. Nice job! That's a white fish. I love those. Those are good. Okay. It may not look like much, but fish like this will be a welcome addition to tonight's dinner. I think I got a little fish. In this culture, nothing is too small to keep. And I do mean nothing. My six-year-old Noah catches bigger fish with his little purple Scooby-Doo rod. Look, son, daddy caught a fish. <laughs> and then, just to add insult to injury, our producer, Chris Marino, who was messing around with his rod and reel, is now pulling in a fish that could eat about 50 of the ones like I caught. Look at this. Look Whoa. at that. Look at that. Reel it in, baby. Reel it in. Wow. What did he say? <laughs> it eats people, be careful. Actually, it isn't true that piranhas are man-eaters, but getting a hand too close to those teeth could really do some damage. There, my friends, is a Surinamese piranha. This is about, what, pound? Pound and a half? Yeah. Pound for pound? How vicious? The most vicious fish I've ever gotten. They just, they just eat the lures to pieces. Piranha is considered some of the best eating fish to come out of this river. One big piranha, a couple of catfish, and some very small whitefish. It's enough that we can head for home. We've got dinner. The day is about done, and no one is really paying much attention. And Chris hooks something really big. Whoa, holy that's a big fish. Oh, 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 no. He's all right, he's all right. That's all right. It's not all right with the men on the boat until Chris has all those sharp teeth pinned under a machete. Your typical piranha is five to 10 inches and weighs about a pound. Like Chris said, this is a bleeping big piranha, 20 inches high, two feet long, and weighing about 15 pounds. 
Back at the village, Laurent's mother Rita is waiting to see what the boys brought home for dinner. But when she sees what the crazy white guy came back with... <laughs> <laughs> Rita knows a good provider when she sees one. When you leave, she's gonna go with you. As the man who caught the biggest fish, Chris has to come out from behind the cameras and be treated as a guest. There's no running water at home, so the river is Rita's kitchen sink. As she chops up the piranha, I can see why this one is so fat. Pregnant female. See the roe? Delicious. She's gonna prepare it. Good, delicious. I love a good piranha egg. Over easy. Tell me how you have a day that beats this one. On the water, fishing with great friends, and then you have someone's mom make you piranha soup? Yeah. Most homes here are too small for anything resembling a kitchen, so families like Rita's share communal cooking shacks. Okuntu's mom works with Rita preparing the evening meal. This is a very typical cooking style of this community. The oil in the water, little onion, chicken bouillon cubes, salt, pepper, hot chilies. I'm really excited. When was the last time you had a good piranha stew? with massive hot chilies. Something else that's typical, see how the wood's arranged so that each piece burns from just one end? That's because the moment the cooking's done, they'll pull the logs out of the fire and save them for next time. They are very efficient because they have to carry that wood on their head. When everything's ready, we eat with serving spoons that double as portable bowls. Mm. Wow. Piranha meat is very, very sweet, very, very firm. Boy, is that delicious. The nice thing is, is that the reason that I hate freshwater fish is that they all taste of mud. They taste of what they eat. Piranhas devour other fish. And so they, they take the meat is much sweeter, much firmer, much cleaner. Really good. It's delicious. Here, like many cultures, it's customary for the young people to hang back while their elders eat. But Laurent and Okuntu have definitely earned a place with the grown-ups. Wow. That is amazing. Finger licking good. That's fantastic. Hey, Amber. Yes. Would you tell these young men something for me? Yes. I spend a lot of time with a lot of people, mm -hmm. but they were so kind and so patient with me all day long. They are mature beyond their years. Okay. I'd love it if my son someday grew up to be like one of these guys. Okay. Are they limbo limbo? Uh, okay. So are they.